Hey guys, this is Fang Sasha VA here, coming at you with take three of, of you know, today's video. Because being a perfectionist is a pain in the butt. But anyways, if you are, if uh, any of you are new here, make sure to comment and subscribe. Definitely hit that bell button. And let's get started. So... This is going to be a two topic video. I'm gonna try to keep both topics short and sweet to the point. One of the topics is gonna to be about video game leaks. The other topic is gonna to be about the video game award. Am I just staying for some of the, well, am I just staying for how modern gaming can be at times? Especially the, especially the culture. So, let's get started with the video game leaks. This kind of goes in tow with the Switch 2 video that I did, to where I basically put a lot, of, a lot of commentators on blast for always making a Switch 2 video, which is still going on, by the way. But, to recap that video, just in case people haven't watched it, I highly recommend you do, is that I've gotten tired of certain leaks, because they have definitely overstayed their welcome at the party, and the fact of the matter is, there's no proof, there's no actual concrete proof, it's only this random person on this social media site said this, and people instantly assume, but I feel like it's real. One of those things that drives me nuts is the whole Twilight Princess and Wind Waker compilation. That leakers say that it's been done for a while, supposedly. Well, if it's been done for a while, where is it? Where is it? And this was one of the more obvious leaks from when the system first launched back in 2017. And it just drives me nuts because it's like this person says that, oh yeah, by the way, there's or or what turned out to be the case, we got a remaster. Um, we got a remaster for the first Metroid Prime. Who knows if they're gonna re? Who knows if they're gonna re? Who knows if they're gonna remaster two and three? Even though they should, in my opinion. And then there's my favorite. The ones that drives me up the wall every time I see a YouTuber I'm subscribed to mention it. The Switch Pro, or now the Switch 2. I've already made a video on it. But it still drives me nuts. Because, again, how leaks or how... Or how it normally goes, so and so says something on Twitter that a source told them this information and it's very vague. And the fact that we, the fact that there are people that do take leaks seriously, is really, it, it makes me facepalm. Because. A leak might seem credible, but it doesn't mean that it's true. And I know that some people will always say take a grain of salt, but there are people on YouTube that legitimately believe any leak that comes flying at them. Again, there's still people that think that there's going to be a Twilight Princess and a Wind Waker compilation. Something that, or be, or there's one other leak 
to where there's something occurring in time that's supposed to be coming. And then there's the Metroid Prime Trilogy for situation. And it's one of those things to where like, I'm just sitting here seeing these still seeing these topics still being brought up. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Switch Pro conversation started immediately around when it first launched. There are certain people in the video game community that is always thinking about the future. It's like, okay, okay, what's next? You know, because it, that's one of the things, that's another thing I don't like about now. People are not enjoying moments. People, people are more what's going to happen in the future. You know, do I believe that Nintendo is working on the next system? Oh yeah, of course. But I don't believe any of the leaks until Nintendo drops that reveal video. Just let me tell you, if you are expecting some uber powerful console, they could actually provide that. But Nintendo likes to do their own thing. So, if they do a Switch 2, I can play all your all your Switch games in in HD and maybe it's built more to where it can handle horror games or graphics or the GPU or the RAM might be bigger. But the fact of the matter is is that they you know Nintendo's consoles has always been more about what they can do with those consoles to make them different. I mean, no one thought about doing a a hybrid system. No one thought of that. You know, before the Switch, the console and handheld gaming markets were two separate things, but the Switch brought, you know, was the first one that to combine the two. The fact that I, the fact I can go out in public and play a big game like Skyrim or Breath of the Wild. If I was Nintendo, that's the type of system I would keep making it. You know, that I would keep making. Just, you know, keep the things that work and take out the things that you know, that didn't meet people's expectations. That's what I would do. But again, supposedly there's a Breath of the Wild or a version of the Final Fantasy VII on this supposed Switch successor at Gamescom. Do I believe it? It wouldn't shock me if they might be showing off the new potential system right now. I mean, they did the same with the Switch when it was called the... Supposedly, they uh, showed it off at, uh, at E3. I think back in 2016, if I recall, or it might be 2015, I can't remember. Um, but come on. I'm someone that prefers being excited by a announcement of something. Like I said, that's why I'm uber excited for Grand Theft Auto 6. Because it, you know, even though that we knew that it was confirmed, 
to see the trailer yesterday? Heck yeah. You know, my first Grand Theft Auto game that my parents bought me was Vice City. So it's cool to see Vice City in HD and places. And I'm hoping that there's some callbacks to Vice City, like... Wouldn't it be cool if there was an NPC walking around and he's wearing Tommy's, you know, Hawaiian shirt? Or maybe like someone, or maybe someone answers, or maybe a, a NPC answers the phone and be like, Hey Tommy, where are you, you know, where are you at or something like that? Tommy Versetti is one of my favorite Grand Theft Auto protagonist and but I've gotten so sick of video game leak I really have I'm burnt out just I wish people would just wait until it gets confirmed or not instead of believing or like reading every leak that comes but I guess the cost of living now to go alongside this part of this conversation now let's discuss when we have the view game awards a show that is controversy free oh wait it's not Oh, what do you mean that they kind of rigged the video game award one year for part two? What? And what do you mean that Jeff Keighley blamed the whole Sonic and Genshin situation last year on the Sonic community when both sides were being toxic? Hmm. Well... Let's jump into my disdain for modern view game culture, shall we? Now, even though that I enjoy the view game awards for the reveals and to see, you know, the games I did vote for win, I don't care about the award show part of it, even though that I do take part by voting and all that. I don't care, because at the end of the day, just just because a game gets best, you know, gets a award, doesn't mean that the other games suck, or mean that the other games that came out this year in that genre sucks. It's a very subjective thing, just like with the whole game of the year. Some people, you know what, some people may say that's not Superstar, their game of the year, and that's totally fair. It's a such it's a subjective thing. Some people may say that this obscure indie game is their game of the year. And that's perfectly okay. But what's not perfectly okay is having video games be propelled into into the same space as Oscars the Grammys. The Rock Roll Hall of Fame. Because let me tell you. Even if video game wasn't mainstream, I would still be playing. Why? Because I grew up with video games. That was the one thing that was... That was... And that's one of the things that's been in my life. Since I've been, since I was, along with Star Wars. Just because video games are now seen as cool, means nothing to me. So, with that said, let me, let me jump into the top 10 things I, dislike the most about modern gaming culture 
modern gaming culture, and let's start with the first one in a previous video. Taking challenge away of, let me rephrase that, taking challenge away from a retro game when it's ported to a new console, or porting a game that is pretty old, that's coming up to almost to 20 years. Holy crap, Sonic Colors is slowly creeping up its way up to 20 years old. Huh. Interesting. Um. And stripping away the whole live thing for pretty much um, what I like to call baby mode. Which is unlimited lives and pretty much stripping away the challenge at all. Which is the point of those old games. And Sonic Colors. In my opinion, and I will still say this, there's nothing wrong even if and this might seem as gatekeeping, I don't I don't care. Not every game should be accessible to everyone. A game should challenge people too. I like a challenge. If a game is too easy to quite literally sleeping through it, no thank you. I'm sorry, but if I'm playing Dark Souls, I'm playing, I'm playing Dark Souls for it to challenge me and to kick my butt and for me to lose my mind and to eventually beat the boss I'm dealing with. Something I'm dealing with. For those people that want a easy mode in a Soulsborne game, if you want to experience a dark fantasy game or a game that takes place in feudal Japan like um, Sakiro, there are other games that you can play that 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 will give you not so big of a challenge that you're looking for. Do not complain to the game developers that video games should be accessible. When to be honest, they they have no intentions of on adding an easy mode to any of those games, and that is why I tip my hat to them. I've seen too many games change, well, not change, but get something edited, either dialogue wise, or or have people complain on Twitter, just just because they don't like how a certain character. The game developers knows what they're doing. They don't need you breathing down their necks. So back off. <sighs> In my opinion, when it comes to older games, unlimited lives should be a toggle in the and I say that because Sonic Origins has that. But guess what? Sonic Origins separates the two to where Classic Mode is the actual one that I would rather, you know, I prefer playing. While the un, while the Anniversary Mode is the widescreen one to where you have um, limited lives continues. And it drives me up a wall. And before anyone, you know, tells me that, so what, you don't want everyone to play video games? No, I do. Just learn how, just learn how a game freaking works and will be good. That's a you problem. That's not the game's problem. And it's not the game developer's problem. That's a you problem.
that's what I that's what we like to call in the in the video game community a skill issue. Number two. Couch co-op. The lack of couch co-op. Now, I am grateful for the fact that I can play games with anyone. Especially with Discord friends, especially if they live in a different state or country. I'm not against playing online with friends. 100%. But my preferred way of playing games with that I know is being there face to face, sitting down on a couch in front of a big TV and just having fun, you know, maybe, you know, eating snacks or maybe eating or something like that. Because nothing will beat actual human interaction. I like you. Even though that I'm glad I can play Master Duel, I prefer dueling, you know, in person with people. Because of that human interaction. It's great, like, when they think that they got me, but then all of a sudden I just play Mirror Force and it, and, and they go, oh man, you got me. You know, nothing will beat that. Because the fact of the matter is, us humans, we still need that, you know, in-person interaction with friends and family at the end of the day. Number three, microtransactions. Luckily, a lot of games have gone to our Battle Pass side. But microtransaction is still something that's prevalent in in um, a lot of games nowadays, and I've started to hate the whole battle pass system too uh, of games because for 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 one thing, right? There's a skin right now in uh, Halo Infinite. That I would want to get, which is the uh, Halo One armor. I would love to have that. Problem is, if I want to get it, I have to pay a good, a good amount of money to get it. When, in my opinion, that should be unlockable. Will I pay it? Unfortunately, yes. In my opinion, even if it means people will have to work harder a skin or to even or to or to even make your uh, Spartan armor blue should be a thing that you can unlock I shouldn't need to pay real money just for the color blue that's dumb Hopefully, hopefully very soon we can get back to when we didn't need to do that, I hope. I forgot which one we're on, so I'll, I'll just get to the next one. And this might actually be one. One of the last points I'll make. Because this one's going to be a doozy. Games that release with tons of glitches and it's not the full game. And what I mean by that is where they end up releasing DLC. And you have to pay for said DLC. Now, I don't normally complain about DLC, 
because I do think that I do think that it's cool that it adds more hours to your game. But I do think that in my opinion that content should be there already in in the game itself. I don't think it should be something that people should pay for. So before the game no before game prices became 70 bucks when it was 60. Okay. I'm going to use Marvel I'm going to I'm going to use Marvel Spider-Man PS4 for a example. The base game is 60 bucks. And to get the season pass, depending on the game can range you anywhere from 9 bucks to about 30. So, the, depending on the price, you're actually could be paying more than what you paid for th with the um, base game. And with like certain games like Witcher 3, I'll give that a pass because it's a big game. You know, and and those DLCs add more um, content to a freaking already giant game. So when it so so when it comes to that, the DLC is worth it. But the type of DLC that isn't worth it is, God, I hate to do this. <laughs> Is the whole new characters that you probably literally have to buy with real money in the textures on Master the game. However, I'm not so much annoyed by that anymore considering they do plan on adding a feature to, to lock things. So that's fine, I guess. Um but yeah, micro transaction, micro tra micro transactions, and download content that shouldn't be pay that that shouldn't even have a price tag, or the or the price of the season pass itself, and the lack of, or the fact that the stories that is in that season pass. Especially for a game like Spider-Man on PS4, it should be included already in the game itself. Um, now we get to the final point. I know that I said there's going to be 10, but I'm sure that I'm ready around minutes for this video already. I don't want to make it too long. I probably will do a part 2 eventually. Needing to download a patch or to download an update to play a new game that you bought. I miss the days when you bought when you bought a game. Are you are you are you know the only work you really needed was to remove the freaking wrapper off the freaking game case. And all you have to do after that is open up the game case, take out the disc, you put it in your system of choice, you shut, you know, you, you know, you let the game, and there you go, you're in. Or B, better yet, if we're going back to the NES, Super Nintendo, and the N, N64 era, those eras, the only maintenance that you needed to do was cartridges. Even though, yes, I know nowadays they say, that that's a bad thing to do. I don't care. It's it, you know, it was still effective. If the game wasn't working after after you put the cartridge in the first time, you pop it out, you blow in it, you put it back in, and then la 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 it worked. But nowadays to play a game, you have to download a freaking update or a first day patch. You mean to tell me that you couldn't get the game 
fully bug free by the time the game launched. Come on. It's freaking annoying. It really is, because it's like... It's like... I guess this also ties into the whole thing about, you know, in my opinion that, you know, games I think are getting too big for the purpose of being, of being big, or that I feel like these games, especially if it's a big game like... I'm gonna use tears of no no I'm gonna use Dark a example that game has tons of glitches because the fact matter is that you know those game developers they're known for making big RPGs. Look at Skyrim. So I feel like a lot of these game developers nowadays, again, they're trying to make their magnum opus. And they're not able to squash all the bugs out? Come on! You know, and like, the thing is too, is that, you know, back during the old school days, if there was a glitch, I didn't complain. I mean, there was nothing we could do. You know, I do think that gamers had definitely became very <sighs> spoiled to the point of toxic because obviously right video games are, are made by human beings and I'm okay with a video game having a net even even, you know, especially if the game is a f amazing, game. I don't care if there's a few bucks. I don't care. It's not that big of a deal to me. At the end of the day. But, you know, because of, you know, the all digital future world bullcrap. Oh, that's never going to happen, especially, again, people are still buying physical books. People are, are buying, you know, vinyl records. And people still buy physical games and movies. I think that's something that these game developers should focus more on. It. Release the game when it's ready to be released. Don't put something out if they're, you know, if it hasn't been fully debugged. And a minor point here is, and definitely do not announce a game before you have anything to show. That is also starting to become super extremely annoying. Like, Outer Scrolls 6 was an years ago, and they still haven't shown anything. Be why? Because they focus on Starfield. Do not announce a game until you have something to show. Now, my final opinion on the game of is that I do think it's great that the Game Awards exist to show people that aren't gamers video games are here to stay. What I don't like is that because of how popular video games have gotten, you're starting to see people demand, like I said, you know, not too long ago in this video, to demand these game developers to change something or to like take out or like alter a line of dialogue or to change a character's design
and all the complaining a lot of gamers do nowadays. Or, <sighs> or better yet, debating on which gameplay style was better for Final Fantasy. The fact of the matter is, when it comes to any game genre or any gameplay style, there's always room for all of it. And in my opinion, a game should be made made with with passion and love and dedication. A game shouldn't be made just because that's what the fans want, in my opinion. If the fans want a game, but the game developers, you know, don't want to make it, well, that's why fan games exist until those developers are ready to make that game. You know, and as much as I, even though that I mainly talk about, I guess the whole negative side with that game that I feel like with how, you know, especially with how legendary a game already is, with how that, you know, proposed Sonic game is, I still feel like that game wouldn't, would, would, wouldn't meet it. everyone's expectations. But I do have to tip my hat to Sonic Team, you know, as much as you know, some of the Sonic fan base may get angry at me for saying this, but I'm kind of glad they haven't made Sonic fan, especially if like they're not feeling it. Because, uh, like I said, I want a game to be made with love and passion. It's just like with music. I prefer seeing a musician put all their craft. And just like with artists, same thing with artists. You can tell, or or listen, or play something, or read something that you can tell there's a lot of in that product. You can always tell because a lot of people can can see through that but anyways that's it for this video let me all know what you think down below in the if you agree disagree and let's get a comment going as always i'll see you all in later guys